What is up guys, Rick Kakis here and this is the Battlefield 1 Guide to the Support Class. Now I have really found myself drawn to the Support Class in Battlefield 1 and I've been doing consistently well while playing Support. So we're going to go over the ins and outs of the Support Class in Battlefield 1 and really show you guys how to support. How to make the best of this class and do well every time you play it. So, let's get started. Now the first thing we need to start out with the support class and one of the main reasons to use this class honestly is the weapons it gains access to. Now the support class isn't running around with those rinky dink rifles. You get fully automatic machine guns when you play support and that is definitely not something to be underestimated. Firstly, gaining fully automatic rate of fire on all of its weapons means that the ease of use of the support class is very high. New battlefield players are going to be able to hop right in, point their guns at people and hold the trigger and probably get some kills and that's something that other classes don't necessarily possess all the time. Furthermore, automatic fire comes with even more benefits than that. Suppression is a lot easier with the support class. Now, suppression in Battlefield 1 works pretty much the same as it did in other Battlefield games. Whereas, if you're being shot at and there's bullets whizzing by your character, that's kind of a sketchy situation, and Battlefield replicates that by making your screen a little bit blurrier and basically making it harder to fight back against an enemy who is shooting at you. Now, with a fully automatic machine gun with usually a larger magazine, even if you're not directly hitting a target, you're going to be shooting near or around him, and if he pops out of cover and tries to engage you back, you're going to have the advantage in that gunfight. And the last huge advantage, and really the main reason of what you should be doing with support guns, is that when you're using a machine gun from the support class, it actually has kind of a weird benefit to it. All of the support machine guns get more accurate as you continue to shoot them. So you really don't want to be burst firing or tap firing or even single firing against enemies. If you see an enemy from a long ways away, you're going to be tempted to just ba 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 pull that trigger every once in a while and just get those bursts on that enemy. But what you really want to be doing is just holding down the trigger. And you'll visually see, and of course you can see in the background gameplay, that the bolts will kind of be shooting around where the sights are and then gradually get more and more accurate until eventually they are shooting pinpoint where the sights of your gun are. That is a huge benefit, especially when they come with such large magazines that you can usually start shooting, get your gun accurate, take out the first enemy and take out his friend as well before you ever need to reload. Now, which specific gun should you use when playing support? Well, to be honest, all of the guns on offer are pretty good. Each have their own benefits. I would really recommend you just unlock them as you go and kind of figure out which ones you like best. I really like the MG15 and the Madsen and the Lewis gun are no joke either. However, I am in the future planning on making a video analyzing all of the support guns and really showcasing the best few. However, what we will go over in today's video is the different versions that come with all of the different weapons for the support class. You have a ton of different options. Suppressive, low weight, optical, telescopic, trench. What do each of those do? Let's go over them, shall we? Firstly, trench variants are going to have better hip fire. You may want to consider using them on very close range maps. Storm variants have reduced recoil, making them easier to use when you're mobile, when you're using them at medium range engagements. Optical variants come with a sight and are generally more accurate. Suppressive variants come with a sight as well, so usually a little bit higher magnification, and they also come with a bipod letting you set up when you're prone or when you're crouched near some cover and get that really accurate bipoded fire. And low weight variants recover faster from recoil and gain accuracy quicker. Now for most maps, I would recommend an optical or a storm variant. Remember, if you want to use a sight for your storm variant, you can go into the customization options and put on an AA sight. And usually those are pretty good. The Madsen one and the MG15 one are pretty usable. 
And for those very long range maps with a ton of vehicles, you're probably going to want to go with a suppressive or a telescopic variant. Being able to bipod and then engage enemies from literally across the map is a huge benefit. Now let's move on to the other gadgets and abilities the support class has to... Well, support people. Now, the first thing you're going to have is a choice between the ammo crate and the ammo pouch. Both has their benefits. The ammo crate, you put it down and anyone around it in a relatively wide area is going to be constantly regenerating ammo and equipment. Now, that's going to be useful. If you can plop it down in front of four people that are in a firefight, you're going to get a ton of points. The ammo pouch gives you ammo a little bit quicker and is more individualized. But the real benefit of the ammo pouch is that it's more mobile and you can frankly chuck it at your allies. If you are near an ally that needs ammo, it'll say press the spot button to just throw ammo at him and it will just fly and follow that guy for a ridiculous length and still resupply him. So it's really what you want to use. Ammo crate is going to be a little bit harder if you're trying to chase down someone who needs ammo and you're trying to throw them the ammo crate and they're running obliviously, which let's be honest is pretty likely to happen in Battlefield, um, you're not going to get those points. Whereas with the ammo pouch, you can throw that into like track them and snipe them and still give you those points. Pretty much it's personal preference, but you should be absolutely, no matter what, running either ammo crate or ammo pouch. I don't care if you think the mortar repair tool wombo combo is the best thing in the world, it's not. You need to be supporting your team and you also really want to get those points. And if you want to get points as a support class and rank up specifically the support class, the basically main and best way to do that is to resupply people. So being able to throw ammo pouches and ammo crates down all the time is going to get you thousands and thousands of points to level up in total and also to level up specifically the support class. And it also really helps your team. Now your second gadget option is a lot more open. You have the choice between two different mortars, the air or the high explosive. The air burst mortar is going to have a wider radius, more effective against infantry. And the high explosive mortar is going to do more damage, effective against vehicles. The air burst mortar seems to be the main mortar of choice, definitely the one I found most effective. Mortars can be very good in Battlefield 1, they can also be very annoying to play against, so expect maybe some messages if you go off a little too hard with the mortar, but it's very good at taking or destroying the enemies in a rather open position. If you have a bunch of enemies in a destroyed building and they have cover if you're fighting them, you know, face to face on ground level, you may be able to mortar over top and get them from behind the wall or whatever. And that's where the mortar is most effective, is digging out enemies from a rather entrenched position so that your team can move in and hopefully capture the point. You should also consider using the mortar if you're against a team with a ton of scout players and they're just hiding on ridges and stuff trying to snipe you, you can easily dial in those mortars and take care of those pesky scouts. Moving on, we have the repair tool, pretty self-explanatory, going to let you repair vehicles, a consideration for one of the larger, more vehicle-focused maps, and especially if you have other players that want you to get into their tank, like if you're playing with a squad and your squad member is in a tank saying, hey, join me, join me, maybe put on a repair tool and then spawn in on him so you can actually help out if the vehicle is damaged. And lastly, we have the Limpet Charge. This is my personal favorite thing to use with the support class. It's a magnetic charge. You throw it at a vehicle or at a building, and in a few seconds, it'll just blow up. Now, it doesn't do the most damage. You're not going to be able to kill vehicles in a single shot, but you will almost always, like, 100% chance to disable them in some way. So if you throw the Limpet Charge on a light tank or even a land ship or whatever, it's going to have a track disabled or engine disabled, and it's going to do a decent chunk of damage. It's really going to help the support class be even better in a variety of scenarios. Now when you see a vehicle, you won't just have to run away, you can actually engage that vehicle and help your team destroy it. 
Now your grenade and melee weapon are really just personal preference, but remember you are going to be able to resupply your own and your allies' grenades, making you a huge asset when taking down entrenched enemies. The support class is really just magnificent in those medium range engagements. It goes a little further than something like the Assault Kit's SMGs, and with a bipod can even comfortably take out snipers. It's very much a jack of all trades, in Battlefield 1. You're effective in so many different scenarios against infantry from a multitude of ranges, against vehicles as well if you have mortars or limpet charges, you're just good at everything and that's why the support class is a great class to play. Now if you are a newer player, just remember to spam those ammo pouches. When you see a friendly, if you go up to where there's been a gunfight, just throw down ammo all the time and you will rack up the points and level up and unlock new stuff. Besides, you don't want to be like a medic who's somehow forgotten to use all his abilities. You're the support class, Lord of Grenades, King of Resupplies. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. Now if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Battlefield 1 videos, leave it in the comments section down below. Now if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickCacus. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.